they always want to out somebody and embarrass them, you know, and that's how people end up getting hurt. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you're going to keep it G and do what you do, keep it G. You know what I mean? Right. Like I said, whether this whole shit is true, false, whatever the fuck it is, there's been other celebrities that have been caught up in this situation. <clears throat> and like I said, that shit is ill to me. Yeah. You know I mean, if you go do whatever you do, it's your business. I respect that. I don't judge you. I really don't give a fuck. But when shit goes south, keep it G. Yeah, like, why, 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 why do it if you got to hide it? That, and and that's, like one, that's one thing we can't be talking about as far as smoking. You know what I'm saying? Right. If, if, you, if you're afraid to do something, you're embarrassed of you doing something, then why hide it? You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, I just, I, I just didn't feel the whole, you know, on the sideline. And, and, and even a game, knowing that it's a game like that that's played in the NBA locker room, that's what bothers me. Like I said, like, and I feel like I'm telling you, which I have, I have a brother, an older brother, my dad's son, who is, who is gay. He's been gay my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Don't get a twist. He'll whip some ass because he's still a man. You know what I'm saying? But he 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 feminine. You know what I'm saying? I love him to death. But at the same time, bro, <laughs> games like that should not be in no type of prof- men's professional sport because it's gonna make somebody uncomfortable. You know That's what I'm right. saying? And I don't. And I, I, I my whole thing is how did it get to that point? <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? How did it get yeah. to that point where the first person plus started the game off? <laughs> Yeah, you I and I can't even tell you how it is. Like I said, that's the locker room that I went into and it was it was it was something that, you know it was something that was going on, you know what I mean? Like I said, I didn't really with me, it was never an issue with me and Dog. You know what I mean? Like we was always on the same page with that. But like just my whole thing is just you know what I mean, there's a time and place. If that's you, that's you. If it's not you, if it's a joke, it's whatever. But nigga, right now, like, Stan Van Gundy's out here screaming at the top of his lungs on at us. You know what I mean? Like, we got to focus and, yeah. and, and and get ready for this game. And then when the, game, when the ball goes up, it, come on, man. Your, your, your mind should only be on the game. And that's just yeah. how we was. It was different. You know what I mean? And like I said, that's the one thing I think that kept him from being great. You know, because to me, not every great player is wants to be or is a leader. You know what I mean? Some people choose to be. And then that, on the reverse side, you don't have to be a great player to be a leader. You know what I mean? Right. Like a leader is something you're born, you know what I mean? Like you're born, you're born a leader, you're born a voice, you know what I mean? I think both of you, uh, you and I have been in the similar positions where we've never particularly been the best player on our team by any means, but our voice is always respected and listened to by the even the super, the head superstar mm-hmm. because we lead, we lead by example. They know every motherfucking night we're going to go out there and do what we're supposed to do. So let me ask you this. Give me two players you feel like that's leading an MVP race right now. <coughs> That's tough. Um, Anthony Davis is tough. I don't even think Kawhi is 100%, and he's out there being Kawhi. Um, I like what DeMar is doing. I mean, KD is KD. Steph is Steph before he got hurt. Give me two. Um, Give me two. Give me two. And I'm going to get you two. I really haven't been watching basketball that much of late, so this is a tougher question. Um, I'll go with AD and Kawhi. Okay, why why Kawhi? Because uh, to me, Kawhi healthy is the best two way player in the game. Okay, hands down, okay. no question. I think Clay and Jimmy Butler are right there. I love both of them, but when Kawhi is healthy, he can commands a game on both ends like no one I've ever played against in my whole life. To be able okay, to guard, the, great best, free, right? guard the best. Who else you said? Guard the best. And then uh, AD. Why AD? I mean, I, I know he's why. A, but... he, I mean, he's a unicorn. You know what I mean? He's He does absolutely everything. He does everything well. Uh, he competes on both ends. Uh, he's a dog. Um, that motherfucker is just talented, man. But then you know what I mean. I like what I, I like what LeBron is doing with the Lakers. That's the topic we definitely got to touch. I love what Joel Embiid is doing. Uh, but go ahead, give me your two. Okay, in the East, I got to go with Kawhi. Just, just getting there, not knowing if he's fully healthy. Seventeen and four, best record in the NBA. Got to go with Kawhi. So I mean, on that side, it's really a no-brainer. Uh, on on this side, to me, who having the best something. year, just dominating, man. You know. I, I, I always lean toward KD, but I, I got to go with LeBron, dog. I got to go with LeBron for what he do, what, what he doing in, in L.A. right now, dog. 
But I don't think people, you have to have a real basketball mind to understand the way he's playing and what he's doing right now. You know what I mean? He's not, every once in a while, he's going to flash and show you like I'm that nigga. I'll go out there and win games. I'm a dunk. I'm a hit game winners. But he's 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 kind of playing the passenger world right now to find out who the fuck he is going to have in the stretch riding with him. You know what I mean? Is it going to be Kuzma, which I think it will be. Will it be Ingram? I like Ingram. I love Josh Hart. He's a killer. You know what I mean? I, I, I love Lonzo. I love their free agent pickup. JaVale, my dog, is finally getting a chance to play. I like to see them work Beasley in the lineup because I think Beasley will be, he's a mismatched nightmare. And I think with that culture and he kind of understands what the fuck is going on, this is my last chance. You got to you gotta roll the dice and let Beasley get out there because that motherfucker can play. I love Lance. But like I said, I think LeBron is playing the passenger seat right now. Because he's trying to find his real Batman. LeBron will be Batman in the playoffs and, 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 you know, as far as they go. But he's too old to do it the whole entire season. So he needs to find out who that, you know, that second that second and third guy are. Yeah, you, you're right. He definitely needs a Robin. I think he can get him to the playoffs by himself, but that, but, but that's the ceiling for them. He, 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 he having an MVP year because he's doing exactly what you said. I think he, he trying to fill the team out, but he's still being dominant. You know what I'm saying? Just past Will. He's still putting up crazy numbers. So... I think I think at the end of the day, everybody going to, you know, like I said, basketball players, you see how he's been down. He's having an NBA an MVP season, but by far, I think Kawhi leading the vote. Yeah, I think of both. Uh, I can't forget Greek Freak. Can't forget Kimba. You know what I mean? I wonder if it's Kimba, and this is all due respect to Charlotte and everything, but is he kind of giving his best years to a, a, a no-hope situation? You know what, what I mean? What about know, PG? PG having a good year. George having a great year. I love. I, he's finally comfortable. You know what I mean. I, 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 he's finally comfortable. We definitely got to touch on Melo. Um, but I mean, there's a lot. It, basketball is exciting. Like basketball is the number one sport in the United States now because of just all the action and the movement, and we're allowed to be more of individuals. You know what I mean? So people listen to us. They want to hear what we have to say. You know, we're getting trades in the middle of the summer, so NBA is the number one topic during the season. It's, it's crazy. People put up crazy numbers. So, <coughs> you know, if it's motherfucking cold, man. That car forgot me, had me, I was going to say thing. <laughs> Oliver Depot. Someone just said Oliver Depot, man. Oliver Depot's. I really like his game. Mm -hmm. I, like what, I like what Aaron Gordon is doing in Orlando under the radar. Step like, before he got hurt. Yeah, Blake Griffin's back on his shit. I love it because he's a motherfucking when, when <clears throat> You was there for a hot sec. When I had BG rolling, BG was an MVP candidate. You know what I mean? We, we lost CP for a long time. And BG averaged like 30-something and 12 and 9 assists. Like, BG is a monster. I just think it was great for him to get up out of L.A. and get a restart. Because he had a lot, you know, it's a lot in L.A. to play. And, you know, once the bullshit starts swirling, man, it's hard to get back on track and get focused. Yeah. So tell me this. What do you think about the Jimmy Butler, how Jimmy Butler and the uh, Philadelphia situation playing out? Looking good. I love, first let me address, actually let me address this first, I'll address that second. I love it. I think it's a huge, he's a, he's obviously one of the best players in the league. He's a go-to guy. He has, he's clutch shots. And he's someone that leads by example. Always plays hard. Always, you, you know, every single night, you know as a player. And why you we want us. So long. Right. You know your role. Like, I played 15 years. My contract, I'm still getting paid till, the, t till next November. I could have played another two years. I just chose to make a move after we won a championship because I wanted, you know, I'm, I was missing my kids and wanted to do other things. But when you know your role, like, that man, man he knows what he's going to do every night. Coaches trust him. He, he's one of your best players. And then he's going to teach Embiid. You know, Embiid is a motherfucker, man. I said earlier, I think Boogie, I would love to see a healthy Boogie right now and a healthy Embiid because that would be a motherfucking battle. Embiid is a, is a, is a freak. You know what I mean? And then Ben Simmons. I mean, I like the situation. Um, but I want to just before, like, what he pissed me off with was the... I just didn't like the way he was from the outside looking in. You know, it may be different in the locker room. And we know first and foremost how it is. But for what I got from it was, I didn't like all the dysfunction he was causing in Minnesota trying to get out. You know what I mean? If you're a franchise-type player, talk to who you got to talk to and get that shit done. But don't... And then at, on, on another point, nigga, if I got a problem with you, I'm coming right to you. I'm not going to Rachel Nichols and opening up our whole locker room on some shit like that. You know what I mean? Which like, was supposed to be my interview. Let me I throw that in there. Don't do that. But still, like, I'm not even coming in. I fuck with you. You don't. I'm not even coming to talk to you about it for the world to see. I'm going to talk to Cap. I'm going to talk to Wiggins first. You know what I mean? So, like, we could talk in the summer when we burning one and talking about that. But I'm not opening 
my locker room up to ESPN like that. You know what I mean? Right. So I just didn't really like his route. And then right before he left, he played like 43 minutes and said some shit like, this shit's got to fucking stop this. You know what I mean? And to me, like, come on, dog, you the best player on the team. They need you to play 43 minutes. Play 43 minutes, dog. You know, that's just how we work. But outside yeah. of that, like, I love Jimmy Butler. I love what he does. I think he's a great addition to and he really makes them a contender. I think, hey, when, when what's good about us and why all 3,000 of y'all here going to love our show is because we connected with the players and we ain't got to be on the outside looking in. And for me talking to Jimmy and knowing Jimmy, you know, like I said, he won us. Right. And I could tell. You know, but, but, before bro, before uh, Wiggins even signed his contract, you know what I'm saying that big contract they just gave him. You know, it it was talks about you know being on the same page because one thing about me and you, okay, as soon as me and you walk in the locker room, when when, when, when you check in in the game and I look at you, I ain't got to worry about if you finna ride with me. You know what I'm saying? So just imagine, Matt, if me and you would have got paid a hundred million a piece, how we was gonna ride out there to win a game. You see what I'm saying? So what's expected from a nigga knowing where we come from and how hard it is to get this money, I got to I gotta beg you to come out here and play? Like, I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have to have this conversation with you every night, my nigga. Okay, bam. It ain't, it ain't resonating with you. It ain't resonating with you. And I don't want to be the asshole teammate to bomb on you. You know what I'm saying? So, bam, I'm going to go to coach. I got a nice relationship with coach. Okay? Coach don't have the balls. Coach don't have the balls to go to him. And say, look, man, either you gonna play or I'm gonna sit your ass down. You know what I'm saying? Coach exactly. ain't got the balls to do that. So Jimmy looking like, damn, coach ain't gonna do nothing. The un- and y'all still from the pan? I don't wanna, I don't wanna spend my blood, sweat, and tears, bro. Respect that. I hear, you know that. what I'm saying? With somebody that ain't ride with me, we wanna earn our money, bro. And let me tell you again, a real one, and for everybody on here, we ain't gonna make that type of money doing nothing else, bro. Playing a game. So you got to appreciate that shit. You got to go out there and give your all. And if, and, if, and if you make it that money and you don't appreciate that, I don't want to play with you, bro. And that was Jimmy's whole attitude. Then that's why I respect it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what was going on inside. It's lot, like you said, <coughs> we would have handled some situations different, no question. You know what I'm saying? But that shit, I would have handled the same, the exact same way. I'm not fucking with you, bro. I right. shouldn't have to ask you to ride. No, we in the no same question. call. There's no question. Is that to, to me, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I loved what they had when they had Levine and those three young boys. But to me, you know, I mean, it's in a bad way because I like Cat and I like Wiggs a lot, but th- they don't bring it every night. I see, you know, I see it starting to turn on a little bit, but Z- Zach Levine was a motherfucking killer, dog. Yeah, no, I fuck Great with Zach. Killer. I fuck with him heavy. I fast little bro, you know what I mean? So now he's over in Chicago doing what he's doing, but he was the one killer. But the question was always like, you keep Wiggins or do you keep Levine? And obviously Wiggins was a higher pick, so Wiggins was who they went with. But to me, man, Levine is a monster and he's a dog. You know what I mean? He's out there representing for the for, for, for our complexion and shit, out there dunking on people's shit. Like skin bros, yeah. Like, he don't give a fuck. He, he works hard. He worked himself back from the injury. Like, But, I mean, Wiggins got all the talent in the world, bro. I, and, 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 and that's what be frustrating me, bro. Like, I seen, I didn't seen, okay. I didn't seen Wiggins give for his work. But and can you imagine too if he had a mindset to lock motherfuckers up too? Because he's so athletic, long and cool. Like he could be, he could be a Jimmy, but he could be better than Jimmy Butler because he's got more God given shit. But he just don't have Jimmy Butler's this and Jimmy Butler's Jimmy heart. work, Jimmy work. Come on, man. He came from nothing. You know what I mean? So and then with with uh, with Cat, Cat is a motherfucker too, man. But you know you can't. You know, and we, when we speak, like, we understand what, what our roles are and who we were on our team. So when we speak, we just speak in real fact. And if you're the number one guy, you can't disappear like Cat disappears at times. You know what right. I mean? Like, every night, you got to be that, 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 you got to be you know, the next coming to KG. You know what I mean? With all due respect to Big Ticket, Big Ticket was Cat, like, you know, Cat, Cat was out with BD. Cat was out with BD. He got to go every night. Every single night, bro, we need you to get 30, 15, and 7. And you could do it. Right. Easily. You mean, and Wiggins can give you 28 in 9 and 7 every night. If they shout out to Rip to. Hamilton. Rip Hamilton on here? Yeah, shout out to Jazz <laughs> Powell, too. Shout out to j Powell. I, I, I like Wiggins, though, man. I, I like him, too. I just I, I, I just wish I can I can put some some gunpowder in this food. I'll, I'll give him my heart for a season, man, to see how it feel to be a dog. Man, man. what? I used to tell motherfuckers, man, if you, God knew not to make me a superstar, boy. 
Because with my mindset, I would have tried to take the whole entire world over. You know what I mean? Straight up. Real from, from top to from sports to off the off the court to life as a whole. I'm trying to take the motherfucking world over. What you think about the Golden State situation with Draymond and KD? I, I, I look at it like this. And, you know, can't nobody really talk about this situation like we can. You know what I'm saying? Because they team ain't as real as ours. They better basketball-wise, but as far as that on that other shit, they don't complain at all. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you if you go to the Bay and ask anybody in the Bay, yeah, they the best basketball team they ever seen. But they love us the most because we was in the city. You know what I'm saying? And we, we believe shit was on another level. And you only, you only understand that if you're out there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like when, when Steph wore the We Believe jersey with me, those motherfuckers lost their mind, bro. And then people think we're crazy too. But like when we would say like that, and you can even ask Steve Kerr, like the loudest arenas wasn't when they were winning championships, bro. That shit when we was playing Dallas in Utah. And Steve Kerr said this building is moving. Like that shit was rocking, bro. You feel me? He had motherfucking weed smoke up in the air. You know what I mean? Yeah. Smoke in Oracle. Believe it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but, hey, but, hey, but, but to touch on what you said, like, okay, I, I remember, I remember time when the practice when me and BD got into it. I'm talking, I really got into it. But the word bitch never came out one time. Let me tell you why it never came out. Not because neither one of us know hope. Because yeah, we know we arguing. You know what I'm saying? Because we in between the lines, we both got passion for the game. But we know as soon as I'm, I put my clothes on, we are at the same spot. Chilling and that shit over with you, my brother. I love you to death. You know what I'm saying? Right. To, if it ever gets to a point where somebody actually call me a bitch and fuck you all that, you I feel like you you you've been meaning to say that. Like I feel like you ain't you ain't just they ain't just come out your mouth doing frustration. Now I can look at it like this too. This how I look at it too. We all everybody in the, in the world have insecurities, and sometimes people with the most insecurities. Blurt out shit that they don't really mean and always the ones having to come apologize, right? Draymond is probably the best playmaker on their team. And the whole situation, I look at it like, yeah, Draymond, KD right there. Shout out to Larry Hughes. KD right there. Why even touch the ball? But then again, Young Draymond Coker. the best playmaker. He'll drive the bitch up, kick it to Clay. We ain't talking about nothing, but he turned the ball over, okay? His that's frustration all, before you go of making the wrong play. Nine out of ten times, he would have made the right play that one motherfucking time. To me, he was drawing the defense in, and he had a cutter to the basket. He had clay behind him. But I think he was really going to – I thought that he was going to hop, crab, dribble, and throw it back to KD for the game winner. But the motherfucker got his hand on the ball, and then we went south. It, it was well, so quick, but even if in, the, in them lines like that, <coughs> that word don't come out. Now, one thing I like about KD, because – Normally, I'm Draymond. I'm always, right. you know, you, you already know me, man. I'm always the one blurting out shit yeah. and have to apologize. That's why I can speak on this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm normally in Draymond's shoes. I love the fact that KD didn't say nothing that he had to regret or come back and apologize, but he was just being the cool one. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm always Draymond. You know what I'm saying? And I know Draymond, all that was came out of frustration of him not making the right play. I can't really say he meant that because I've seen, I seen them too many times how they fucked with each other, bro. He did. that. They real brothers. Like me, being in that locker, they real brothers. And to me, no one was madder in the world at that play than Draymond. That right. nigga knew he fucked up. You know what I mean? So I think what it might have been was, I, like I said, we wasn't there. But something might have been said, a look might have been made, and he, and, he, and he flashed. But it, it was based off of he knew he fucked up. That's because he's re you know, he, he'll, admit, he'll be the first one to admit it. But like we both said, nine out of ten times, that was that one time he fucked up. Nine out of ten times, he's going to make the right play. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like I said, I think he knew he fucked up, and then people might have got on him or might have heard something or whatever, and he flashed. But these dudes really fuck with each other. That's the one thing when I went in this locker room, bro, is it's second to none. It, you would have loved this shit, dog. Like, it's just, it's us, but it's just, it's just the whole environment. Like, we were dope, but upstairs was nuts. The yeah. whole environment is. Like, imagine if the whole environment vibed how we vibe. You know, maybe not getting high every night and drinking every night, but just was just on the same love. Like it was just such a cool experience to go to practice or go lift weights or go get treatment because it was going to be a couple dudes doing it. Everyone's around, always encouraging each other, and that's why I say when these teams try to build these these other teams try to build teams on paper. 
the one thing that'll always get Golden State over the hump is their motherfucking chemistry. These dudes really fuck with each other. You know what I mean? So I don't really think, you know what I mean? It, the bitch word is definitely disrespectful when things were said that, you know, could have been fought on. But like I said, I like you said, we appreciate the stance that KD took because you know Draymond, the same thing that, you know, makes you laugh, gonna make you cry, he's all heart. You know what I mean? And yeah. like you said, he, he would die he would die for KD. You know what I mean? Put it that way. We know that. You know what I mean? He'll do anything for his teammates. So I kind of give it a pass from the standpoint of like, 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 did, 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 like, did he call Trish to the bitch? That's what I, you know what I'm I look at shit like that. Like, like, did you did you call Trish to the bitch when when, when y'all got into y'all little scuffle? He might have. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't there. I'm saying, like, that's right. when that word come out. That's when you right. read it. You right. know what I'm you're saying? Right. Like, you're right. I, 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 just, I, I, just, I didn't know how to read that. Yeah. But to me, like, the whole situation with that was that kind of shit, not necessarily maybe the words, but that kind of shit happens with teams a lot. You know what I mean? Like you said, you and BD almost squared up. Motherfuckers have fought in practice. They've cussed each other out. They've cussed coaches out. You know what I mean? I heard AI I've say something. I've definitely cussed coaches out. Ever. AI told Mo Cheeks, punk ass, one time, just because you're wearing the suit don't mean you're the coach. I said, oh, my God. Shout out to Barnes and Wells. <laughs> That's not like something AI say. You know what I mean? AI was, you know, you got it, but that kind of shit, ha you know what I mean? People get it, and you keep it moving. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think the fact that it was the Warriors, and it was against LeBron at Staples Center, if the world was watching, it blew up. You know what I mean? And that's what the, everyone wants to see. Oh, this is a problem now. KD's gone. This is going to be the reason. They need to trade Draymond. They need to, you know what I mean? They they don't need to do anything. You know what I mean? These mother, Draymond, they squashed it. KD may have some hard feelings for a while, which is going to happen. But at the end of the day, we're motherfucking men. And we go go out here and win the shit. But like I said, I think the friendship before was so sincere. So it's really going to give, like, if you don't have no connection with bro and went off on him, that shit is over if your teammates are not. You know what I mean? But since they have a prior connection, they were really cool. Like, <laughs> oh, my bad. This nigga Gilbert would say, I've been called a bitch many times and I still didn't pass the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I fuck with Gil. We got to work Gil and in, in, throw our shit every once in a while, too, because he's, he's a monster. Everybody knows that. All right, so, okay, now let's get on uh, what is, what's Mellow. Let's get on this mellow situation. How they doing, my boy? I feel like they fucking over my boy, man. Yeah, come on, man. You already know that. You want to go ahead and go first? You want to go first? You want me to go first? Nah, go ahead and tap in. I think what it is was, this is, to me, this is a, a double-edged sword from the standpoint of, to me, I think Mello should have bought into, let me just go over here and be the sixth man. I thought he should have did OKC too because from the standpoint not that he's not starter talent because the, the motherfucker to me he was top three hardest to guard first ballot Hall of Famer no question but to me if no you question go, first ballot Hall of Famer no let's, let's stop right there no question no first ballot Hall of Famer let's stop it to me if you're coming off as the sixth man that means you're going against the other team's second or third best defender offensively the ball still runs through you and you're playing with one of the superstars but when you start, you're the third or fourth best star, but your other stars rock. You know what I mean? Mello and PG rock. James and CP rock. You know what I mean? Mello could still rock, but he just needs to get more of the ball, more of the rhythm, and it's not the situation. So to me, that's when you go as a six man and the ball runs through you. They run more pick and rolls. They run more isos. So I think mentally, if he could have bought into that, that would have been the key for both of for, for in both situations to me because he still has more game left in him you see his summer workouts he's killing you see when he gets in a rhythm he's still killing but like you said i think they trying to make him like you know when the nba doesn't want you around no more they don't want you around no more bro they're gonna get you up out of there so they're trying to make him the scapegoat in the problem which is unfair which is bullshit i mean we all all the real motherfuckers know it's bullshit but it's just it's the game they play man so with if, if, if the time is up, the time is up. You know, hopefully, I hope he gets one more chance at least. I, I'm hearing him talking to Miami. I think that'd be a cool look with him and D-Wade. And if, you see, D-Wade just came off the bench and had 35 last night. You know what I mean? To me, it's, it was never about who started. It's about who finished. You know what I mean? But I, I think they're trying to make him a scapegoat. I think he's got game left. But I think as 
the third or fourth best star on the team, and he's still a star to me, just accept that six-man role and go rock that second unit. Yeah, I, you know, me being in that situation, I, you know, I've seen it happen to a lot of people. Ron, me, AI, a couple people, AI, you know what I mean? AI quit. crazy. It's just like they put you in situations to fail, you know what I mean? Like, we, you just said it when I, when I came to uh, the Clippers. I had just got there, didn't get a chance. But I was there by two weeks. Chris Paul no broke chance. his hand. No chance. They break his, he breaks his hand. They like, we got, we need another point guard. We got to let you go. And after, after being out half a year already. So, <coughs> like, they, they, they put you in situations like that, like you can't play. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, we all know, like, we both just said, Melo is the first battle Hall of Famer, no question. Um, and there's no way that a score like that can't play in this soft ass game right now. You know what I'm saying? And I honestly feel like this. And and just tell me if you agree with this. This is how I felt Houston should have used him. <laughs> Fuck all that three point shit with Melo, okay? Yeah, if, if he if he in the game and in the floor of the game he get a pick and roll and he pop for a three, let him shoot that. Alright? Let him shoot that. But most of the time, you let somebody come off Melo on that block and drop it down to him on that post. Let the game slow down for him, and I guarantee you, if you give him six to eight touches on that block, he gonna score six times, they, and, and that's how he gets into a rhythm of a game. They didn't use him like that. They expect him to come in the game. Go ahead. He can also pass though. Don't right. sleep. I think like he's so pressured to come in and play their style that he feel like he has to kind of force shots up. When his game is, he feels the game out. You know what I mean? But I think he's, that's why I think in the starting lineup with who he's playing with, he feels like I got to come out and do this. You know what I mean? But it, 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 but with the second unit, you play your same game. You still going to play 28, 29, whatever minutes you need to play, you still going to play. But you're just going to have five or six minutes first where, nigga, we coming to you. You mean? Rock. Shout out to the OG Grand Hill. G Hill, what up? That man hairline ain't going nowhere. That's my big bro, man. Appreciate the tickets again, big bro. Hey, man, but yeah, I, 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 I um, with Melo, man, they, they, they just using him wrong. And, and one thing I don't, I, I can tell coaches don't do no more, bro. What Don Nelson did with us, and I, and I know Popovich did it with us. Uh, Rick Carlisle did it somewhat. We did, it, you know, somewhat with Rick, but Your coach bro, needs to Snap Marley. Yeah. What up with you, baby? Snap Marley, what's up, boy? Shout out to my little bro. Hey, they need to uh, sit down with each player for the season and tell them what he expects. Tell them they wrote. You know what I'm saying? No, but to me, no, to me, the play, I, no, it's fucking crazy you said that. I was just talking because I'm starting my AU program back in Sacramento. And I, I we had the high school kids. And I told them, like, there should be no guessing game why you're not playing. You need to go up to the coach. That's what I used to do. I did it. I remember the first person I did it with was Adam in Sacramento. And I just like, what do you want to see from me out here to help me get minutes? And he's going to tell you. And that's what I learned. Like I learned. That's what I learned. Because everyone wants to come in and be a young mellow, be Kobe, KD, and score. They're the be. A, I remember one thing that Doc Rivers said: be a star in your. There's a role for everybody. Mm -hmm. Could could we have scored more? Could we have shot more? Hell, motherfucker, yeah. But that wasn't our job. You know what I mean? As and I use this as a reference. As amazing as the Warriors are with all the players they have, I mean, now you could probably add a healthy boogie to that. But they have two superstars. It's KD and Steph. And as mm. good as Draymond and Clay are, they're motherfuckers as good as Boogie is. He's a superstar. But the rest are role players. Like they have that they know what they got. Draymond knows what he's gonna do. Clay knows what his job is. Like there's no there's no guesswork. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But they have you have to buy into that. You know what I mean? Sean Livingston knows when he comes in the game what he's gonna he's supposed to do. The coach knows what he's gonna do. Iguodala, mm -hmm. same reason why these guys can play until they don't want to play anymore because they know their role. And that's what people don't understand. Like, motherfucker, find out what your role is, bro, and, and rock that shit. That's why people say, yo, you played on so many teams and this, this, and that. Motherfucker, every single team I played on in my whole career, check it, I started on. From, from the Lakers to the New Warriors to the to the, to the, 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 the Warriors <laughs> with you to the Clippers. Like, I know what I, the fuck I have to do and what my job is, and that's what I just did it. Could I have done more? Hell, motherfucking yeah, but that just wasn't what what it was. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. <coughs> well, you know, but like. Go ahead. Go ahead.
No, I was gonna shout out. Uh, I forgot Damian Lillard, man. He's having a hell of a season this year too, man. Yeah, shout out D Lillard. Yeah, shout out D Lillard. Hell of a season. Greek free. Got, we, we mentioned him. Right. The, 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 the basketball is fun, man. I'm just so busy right now with the boys. I don't get a chance to watch as many games, but I catch the highlights, man. It's just so exciting. But hey, bro, let me say this though. I I feel like like if, if like if I had two stars, the conversation with them, I will bring them both at the same time. And that conversation with them would be simple. You both of y'all my stars. We only go as far as y'all take us. You know that. Stars light, ultimate green light, right? Okay, just say that's a shooting guard and a power forward. They two stars. I got a sin. I bring my sin and I say, look, man, somebody got to clean this shit up. Somebody got to do dirt. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got to clean that paint up. I need you to get down there, clean that paint up, be physical in that paint, make your presence felt every night. You know what I'm saying? Bring my point guard in. Bam. You know, this conversation should be simple with you. Run the show. Guard the ball. Pick up, you know what I'm saying? Guard the ball. Control the game. Dictate the game. That's your, that, 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 that keep your turnovers low. If, if, if five professional motherfuckers that's getting paid millions of dollars can't understand that and go out there and play, you don't need to be in the NBA, dog. But it's a different game because they don't have nobody teaching them that, bro. It's a different, you know what I mean? I got a taste of, fortunately, I finished up with a great team. You know what I mean? But I got a little bit of taste of it in, in, in Sacramento where it's just... When you don't have any, and, and Boogie, my thing, I fuck with Boogie, but he, he was a star, but he didn't really, I was trying to help, you know, we, he's still close, he's like my little brother, I was trying to teach him how to be a leader in the right way, focus your energy in the right directions, you know what I mean, just how to, how, how God damn it, how to be a leader, um, damn, I forgot what I was going to say, every time I sneeze, I get fucked up, but, uh, you my Boogie. Yeah, what the fuck was I gonna say? Damn, lost. I was on the tangent too. But go ahead, you say something. I'll catch back up. Oh uh, well, shit. You know, really, we were just talking about players and their roles. You know, so yeah. the coaches giving them players their roles and how they don't understand it. But at the end of the day, we was we, we got on all this on this whole subject of talking about Boogie and the Warriors, um, and then we got on Melo. But um, I I don't think the Warriors will have no problem when it come down to it. They still gonna be. Fighting for a championship, they're gonna be right there. Um, with Melo, I hope Melo find a home because they're definitely disrespecting him. It's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? He, he definitely still one of the top 30 players in the game, 30 scores in the game. Um, Philadelphia on the way with Jimmy Butler. Fucking anybody talking about it, they on the way. Um, I'm glad he went out there and, and made his presence felt. He going out there with, with that, with that winning attitude, what they needed. And as you see, Embiid is loving it. Cause he got another dog with him, and, and and one thing about it, one thing about it, it's gonna be interesting to see what they get for Fultz. You know what I'm saying? Cause you got you got your three stars now. You got Simmons, hey, Embiid, and, and Butler. What, the, what they get for situation. Fultz is gonna be gonna, gonna be special. You know what I'm saying? And what if they get a Terry Rozier or something like that for Fultz? That'll be nice. Another, another dog. But that, that folk situation is fucked. To me, it's crazy. Like, I don't, like I said, outside looking in, they mind fuck that boy. You know what I mean? He was a killer in college, bro. And they, I don't know how this whole thing, how you need to change your shot. Like, to me, you don't ne never have to change your whole shot. Just in, like, you, when people say, like, to, people tell me, like, Lonzo's never going to be able to shoot. People realize that, like, when Magic Johnson came in, he couldn't shoot. When Jason Kidd came in, he couldn't shoot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jason Kidd was, what, top five all time in three-point... Uh, at the end of his career, he was draining them all. So your, jo your job is to to shoot. Yeah. In the off that's all, you know what I mean? So everyone could learn how to shoot. So to me, I don't know why the whole form and all that shit came into place, but to, you know as well as I do... That mental is the is ninety percent of the NBA. Yeah, I blame him. I blame I blame him, bro. I, it, I don't know how you that weak minded when you get drafted that high in the draft and you then you all of a sudden can't shoot. But I that's right. why, that, that, but see that's why I said I think well, they do that is. I think someone tried to make him change his shit up. They tried to make him change his shit. And you got to think, what is he, 19? You coming in, you got the whole world. Like, you're the number one pick fucking with MB. You're supposed to be the, the, the one that's going to help them go to a championship. You know, not that he's AI, but the next AI to go with Embiid and motherfucking Ben Simmons. You know I mean, you're the first pick. So there's a lot of pressure riding on that. Like, we never felt that. Obviously, we wouldn't have been that kind. We had a different mind. But to put yourself in his shoes from that standpoint to feel like, and then they're like someone's telling you got to change your whole entire shot. And you know, if you change your shot, that's a long process. 
and then you get injured on top, that's a long process. But even Shane, the, the number one thing in professional sports is your mindset. Every motherfucking night, just got to be right. You don't stand a chance. So now the motherfucker's out here, you know, moving the ball around and, and shooting it because that's just where his mind is right now. And then you got football players, you know, make you know making fun of it. And I don't. It, it is what it is. It's the kind of world we live. In. I'm not even tripping off that. I'm not trying to make that point. What I'm saying is, like, his mental is gone. And mm. is, is there someone to really get that mental back? And now they're here. They, you know, he needs a fresh start or whatever. I hope he goes into a situation that someone can really talk to him and mentor him and like, young boy, go play your motherfucking game, man. You're the first pick for a reason because if you don't, you only got another year or two in your, in your right. careers, bro. But you got a lot of game. Like, bro's got a lot. He was in the Pac-12. You mean fuck up there with, you know, Nate and Jamal Crawford and the little boy from San Antonio. Like, all them little motherfuckers out there hoop. You know what I mean? So, the boy can play. You know, I, I, just, I don't know. I don't know what happened to his shot that fast, bro. Cause I, you know what I'm saying? It, it has me thinking. It has me pondering, could he ever shoot? Uh, I'm, like I said, in college, he did. Watch, watch some of his shit in college, bro. You'll be impressed. Because like I said, I, I didn't know that much about him until my homeboys in my uh, UCLA group chat, shout out to homies in UCLA group chat, they like started putting film in our group chat. That motherfucker, go, bro. Like I said, not, not all the time the offense translates. We know college doesn't always translate to the pros the right way, but he could go. I mean, but like I said, the number one thing was his, now his mental and his shot, and you don't stand a chance like that. <laughs> but anyway, bro, it's been real. I got to get the boys dinner. It's 530. Finish getting haircuts, but uh, let's make this. When you coming back out here? When you going back to Fox? Uh, They just told me two weeks. You coming out in two weeks? Yeah. I'm going to make sure I come in on the same day so we can just both do the shows together then. And then we got to... Hey, well, we were just giving y'all a preview of what our show going to be Most like. Days. I know y'all fuck with it. We appreciate our 3,000 of y'all that was on it. We hit three. We hit the 3,000 mark first day, Miggity Matt. Be all right, bro. We're going to make it happen. I'll talk to you.